another week, another video, and this time we're going to be flushing our radiator. Here's a sneak peek of your final result after two flushes. For the coolant of the 2 liter, all you need is 5.5 liters, and any kind of ethylene glycol based coolant, so the green stuff. And how often you should do it? It's about 40,000 kilometers or 2 years. Here's the status of my coolant. The last time I filled this up was over 2 years ago when I bought the car. So you're going to open this, you take your ticker baster, squeeze in. If we check out our coolant, that actually looks amazing. Most people looks like diarrhea, but mine actually looks like Kool-Aid. This is how we're going to start off. You want to raise your car and take off your front bumper. Now once you do that, we're going to go to our driver's side. You're going to see two things. This is our drain, which is like a little pipe that's connected to a radiator. And this is our valve, known as a pepcock, that you can turn to your left, which will cause it to drain. I'm going to remove this by twisting on it. So now we have this thing here, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Simply push this into here, and now we have a nice long extension. I put my vinyl tubing in like so. I'm going to twist this around, and then I'm just going to push this in there. And our drain line, you want to put it into a pan. There you go. So now I'm going to attempt to drain it. All I'm going to do is put my hand in there and try to counter it. Oh, Stupidity, man. So now I'm going to attempt to drain it. All I'm going to do is put my hand and turn it counterclockwise to the left. I got to loosen just a little bit. It's a quarter way turn. All right, ready, set. Oh, so the coolant comes out like that. I thought it'll come out through this pipe. Okay, that's going to be pretty messy. So that's coming out, that's coming out nice and green. See how it's splashing all over the place? Let's change that. So you wanna pop this open here and then you wanna open this valve over here. Okay. <laughs> like there's no need for this pipe over here. Now it's just draining as it should, okay. So I'm just gonna leave it. Oh, this is gonna pour it for a while. All right, so here's the situation with our drain. It's starting to drop very slowly, so we can assume that pretty much 5.5 liters came out and filled up the aluminum tray. Now that the radiator is completely drained, we can go ahead and close it up. It's hard for me to show you this camera angle, but I'm gonna do my best. You wanna just hand tighten this, turn it clockwise, and that is perfect. Do I even see it? Yes, you do, it's right there. Cool. All right, so now let's take off our air scoop that's held down by these four screws. Beautiful. Our reservoir tank has two 10 millimeter bolts. One is going to be over here, and the other is going to be over here. In order to take off this line, pull it right here. Just like that. So we're done with draining this. Now we gotta drain our reservoir tank. All right. So this looks pretty dirty. We're just gonna degrease the surface of this. Now you just wanna agitate the surface. Hey, that in hole. And you can see even from the bottom, it's like soaking out. So clear water is coming out. So this is good. Okay, and then lastly, obviously, you wanna dry this. I'd say this looks a lot better than when we first started. All right, so let's go ahead and install this back into the car. And uh, so let's put this back. This line, there's a little placement down there. Here, here, and this just slips right in there. Cool. Okay, and we're good. That's how you install the reservoir tank back in. All right, so now you want to put your intake scoop back on. All right, a little more difficult than it should have been. Okay. Let's take a sample of our original coolant and save that for later for a comparison. Now in this step, we're going to flush our system. Depending on how bad your coolant system is, you may want to use something like this. Now you want to open up your radiator cap to start filling in with distilled water. Put it right there. Make sure you don't dump it in too fast or else it may just leak out. If you find your system is backing up a lot, there's this purge line or relief line you can like undo. Just take away here. We're gonna continue filling up our system. Since more distilled water isn't going through, what we're gonna do is start the car and let the pump cycle through the entire engine. And you wanna watch your coolant gauge. Make sure it does not overheat your engine. So let this kind of cycle through for like 10 minutes or so. 
So the temperature is about 84 degrees. When I squeeze this, look what happens. You can see water popping out. So that means this radiator is without any air. So I'm gonna turn off my car now and the gauge is looking good. I'm gonna take this off, put this on here. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna turn on the car. Put the heat on max. Okay, while I'm doing that, I'm gonna car idle for 10 minutes and I'm gonna keep close attention to my coolant gauge. If this starts spiking up, that means there's air in the system. All right, so I let it idle for 10 minutes. Now I'm just gonna turn off my heat and I'm just gonna turn off the engine. I'm gonna let the engine cool down. Okay, so this time I didn't raise the car up. I decided to just lower and just take off the bumper. But what we're doing is just letting the distilled water just drain out. So here's the result from the first flush and it's a lot more greener than our original. Let's see how much coolant actually came out. This entire container is four liters. I'll say about a gallon. Okay, so here we got our second flush with the radiator. Sometimes the system may back up a little bit. All you do is just grab your upper radiator hose and squeeze it. And you can hear some stuff. And guess what guys? I actually got this freaking tube to work. Turns out you don't have to unscrew the cork all the way. Just a tiny little bit and the drain pipe will just do its thing. And man, I think we're good. This is almost crystal clear. This is how a successful flush looks like. That's my original coolant. That's after the first flush, second flush, and my new coolant using Prestone. Here we are with the basic green stuff. I use a 50-50 mix, and more than likely, I'm probably just gonna use this entire bottle, and the rest will go inside my reservoir tank. Seeing how things are spilling apart when I fill it up with distilled, I'm gonna put a microfiber cloth. That's my relief line there. Presto, let's do this. If you feel like this is taking too long, you can start up your car, let your thermostat open up. Keep in mind your fan is off. Don't, do not turn your fan or heater or AC on. All right, let's take a look at the situation. So if we take this off, we have our coolant. If I squeeze this, looks like this is all the system is taking. So I'm gonna shut off the car right now. Seems like there's no air in the system either, which is really nice. So I'm gonna turn this off, put this in here, bring that part in here. I am going to close it and oh nice put the rest of this inside of the coolant reservoir yeah so this is right at F but whatever we'll close that you might want to use a degreaser and just take off simple wipe down all right so who wants to go for a ride all right so bumpers back on the engine is idling Let's try out the heat, your coolant gauge, looking good. All right, so let's put on max heat. All right, let's rev up the car. Yeah, okay. I can feel the heat. Since I feel heat, there is no bubbles in the system. I'd say this is pretty successful. Let's just go for a ride. Man, it's freaking hot. So after a drive, you're probably gonna notice that your reservoir tank is actually empty, even though we fill it up to the full line. If you take a look in here, it's all the way in the bottom. So make sure you fill this up. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace!